Hey guys, this is just going to be a quick review on the Sony Z90, one of my personal favorite um, cameras that uh, I, I have used. This is not my personal camera, this is Works camera, and I was able to choose a camera like they gave me a budget and I had to buy all this gear and this is the camera I chose and one of the big reasons was because I wanted something easy to use. So this is like a camcorder, it's actually a really pretty small camera. Um, the reason it looks big is because the attached microphone, the attached handle, which you could take off. But it's actually very, very simple to use. Um, if you know, every user should be, anyone should be pretty familiar with how a, a camcorder operates. And it's got this wonderful auto function here. I'm just going to pull this up. So you can push it, see how it's all on manual. You can just put it up and everything's on automatic, uh, which is great. And it's really easy camera to turn on. You just flip the screen. Um, and it should, well, it should start operating right away. Yeah, so it just starts operating right away, or you can pull the um, the LED and that starts going right away. Oh, sorry, pull, pull the viewfinder, uh, fantastic viewfinder. I'm just gonna begin with the negatives. Oh, sorry, I'll just finish that thought. So the reason I purchased this was because it was simple to use. So if I was away for anything, I could hand this off to somebody put it on auto and get very usable footage even from somebody who's not familiar with camera um, because you auto focus on it and the automatic functions are really really good um, so that's the reason I got it so I, I just want to before I talk about all the positives with it I've, I've used it for about two years and off and on on projects and I want to talk about um, the negatives first of the um, Z90 the biggest negative, it doesn't have 4K 50 or 4K 60, so the max you got is 4K 30. So in Australia, we have PAL, and so I've got it set to 4K 25 frames per second. So that might be a deal breaker right away, the fact that you can't do 4K 25. So what I do, or 4K 60, sorry. So what I do is I shoot the interview in 4K, and then I do everything else in 4K 50. And then if I want to slow it down, I go to variable. Um, just because what seems to work nowadays is a, a you know crisp um, interview, well lit interview, and then slow motion B roll. That's what the that's what seems to be working for a lot of corporate esque or doc documentary esque videos. And this cam camera is very good. And just unfortunate, it doesn't have 4K 60. The next thing that's really bad about this camera, <coughs> which I can't stand, is the battery. It's a very small, like, handy cam-like battery. It, it's not prosumer um, at all. It doesn't last. Like, you'll need at least two of these to get you through a whole day. And even then, once you take this out, try to get it charging right away if you can in the background. But I, I bought two of these cameras and a charger because you can charge this just from the camera. I don't think it comes with a charger. So I, I had to buy the charger separately. I bought two of these Handycam batteries. So, you know, just to get me through a day. The third thing I don't like about it is the um, menu system so over here you got iris um, iso slash gain and then shutter and then over here is the thumbstick sort of like the movement you can move through menus going up down uh, sorry a uh, joystick or thumbstick and you can press it down to enter so i'll just want to show you why i don't like it at all and it always takes me a few seconds to go oh, okay what am i doing you know um how do, how do i get out of this so let's say i'm shooting and I want to change that ISO. Okay, I'll, um, uh, I'm going to change the dB down to zero. Okay, I'm at zero. Okay, logically you'd go, oh, okay, I'll, I'll press ISO again. Push it. No, uh, it's gone to automatic. So when you see that A tab, it's gone to automatic. You're like, oh, crap. So you press it again. You can go down with the scroll wheel. So there's a menu here. You push that. It's a menu and there's a scroll wheel um, next to it there. So I'm just going to bring down the scroll wheel again till I get to zero. Um, there it is. Okay, how do I get out of this? Do I push the menu button here? No, that's gotten me to the menu. Oh, and, and it's, still, it's still on zero and it's got the... ISO DB selected. What you have to do is you have to push the joystick to enter it. So I'm just going to push the joystick. Just push that one down. And then see, it's set it now to 0 dB. So that muscle memory of selecting what you want, you've got to just stick with the joystick. And then once you're happy with what you've selected, you've got to push the joystick down. And that muscle memory of going, oh, I want shutter speed, and then quickly adjusting the shutter speed and then accidentally pressing you know, it again... Um, it is just so jarring. It's the only camera 
out of all the cameras I use where it takes me a few seconds to memorize that. So I really don't like that menu system um, at, at all. Like I, I can get used to it, but again, it always takes me a couple of minutes to go, oh crap, why is it on automatic? Um, it's got a shared uh, zoom and focus here, which some people might not like. So this ring, you you press um, you press that up, and now this controls the zoom. So I guess you can do crash zooms, or you um, press that down, or you put it down on the down selector. And now it's got focus. Um, so I, which I which is what I keep keep it on. I just keep on the focus. Um, but that's about it. That's the only negatives about it. And again, it might be a big deal breaker for you guys already not having 4K slow motion, 4K 50 or 4K 60. Uh, I was very disappointed. So I'll just go off with the go off on the um, positives. What I like about the camera. Oh, sorry. And the other negative, I don't like this view. Uh, the lens cap. Uh, I'm shocked. I haven't lost this. I said right away, oh, I'm definitely going to lose. This is the first thing I'm going to lose. And I've just stayed really disciplined with it and all the shoots I've been at. We, at um yeah i uh i just haven't lost that lens cap but this is I, I really wish this was part of the lens hood somehow like the ex1 um but yeah um uh so i'm just oh geez sorry it's hard to see through the camera if i'm getting it i'm just gonna t i'm just gonna leave that off for now I'm, I'm, I'm just struggling to get that back on okay so the positives of this camera the ergonomics are fantastic so i normally shoot holding it out like this and then I got I just uh, controlled the zoom rocker like that um, the record function here and then I just hold and then I have the uh, the focus like that and I'm, I'm just literally doing that the whole entire time during during a shoot um, and there is room if you want to put an external monitor the great thing about this model has an SDI out if you want to go that route I I'd, I'd just like to be as fast and as nimble as possible but that option is there it also has XLR cables for professional audio so having great scratch audio which is generally the audio that your camera can record uh, we often refer to that as scratch audio we didn't television I guess um, uh, unless you hook it up to a boom and then hook it up there. Anyway, um, this is the recommended mic with it, and it, it, it was very, very expensive, this mic. I think it cost nearly $600. You can get a NTG3 for that price, and it's a small microphone. But um, this is so professional. Just having very good scratch audio is so good to go back to. So normally how I set up an interview, the, interview, in, the person I'm interviewing has a lapel mic and has a microphone above them that's hooked up to like a, a digital recorder like this, what I'm recording on now, uh, a H5. And usually the the boom mic uh, that's on a mic stand, the NTG3 or, or you know the, whatever microphone I'm using that's hooked up to the H5, that's my main mic. If that fails, I go to the lapel mic. If that fails, I go to the uh, the onboard mic here, the the on camera mic. So this is a redundancy microphone, but it's still very professional. Like a little bit of EQing, you can get very professional sound from this mic. It's it's fantastic. Um, the ease of use is fantastic w w with this camera, despite that menu option. I really love the ergonomics of this camera. Just being um, a camcorder, it, it's it's just absolutely fantastic to use. Um, the OLED screen here is absolutely crystal clear. It, so if it's a very bright day, you can't see the, through the screen. This is amazing. And as I get older, my vision's getting worse and worse. Um, so. <laughs> um, uh, when, when I use, uh, I find myself using a EVF, and when I have a very good EVF, like an OLED EVF like this, it just saves the day. I tend to use this, and it's got a nice eye cup here, so it's easy to see. Um, so, and I'm very shy. I don't like people like I was shooting a corporate video, and I didn't want to want people to see what I was shooting, so I quickly closed it, and I was just operating <laughs> through that. Um, the other thing about this, it. it it says it's an uh, f2.8 camera, so you think, oh, that's not bad, shallow depth of field. It isn't really. Like, um, I'll show you what happens. So I'm going to go iris here. I'm going to put it down to um, uh, the lowest it can go. I'm just going to zoom out here. Zoom out. So I'm just going to put it to the lowest it can go. So there's 2.8. I'm going to hit enter it. Now watch what happens when I zoom in. See that? It, see how the um, f-stop will start closing down? So um, you'll get a change of exposure if you try to put it on the lowest setting. So what? just treat it as the lowest this camera can go is, um, oh, see I've done it again, is f4. So once you hit f4, 
there it is there just treat it as that's the that's the minimum um f-stop of this camera and see that now i can zoom in and zoom out and not worry about the um the f-stop closing down so and that will help you get a shallow depth of field so if i've got my interview there say the f5 uh, oh, sorry, the GH5, I can zoom in and see it forms a compression. I can get sort of a shallow depth of field. I know that's a bad example, but because of that zoom range, uh, sorry, because it's being a zoom uh, lens camera, you can create compression by zooming in on your interview subject. Like So they're talking and the background will sort of be compressed. So just, just pull them away from the background. So say that's the wall and you're interviewing them. Just pull them well away from the wall, zoom in, and you should get the um, background a bit out of focus. That's a little trick there with zoom lenses and just using compression to create that shallow depth of field. So it's only an f4 lens, but it's got a great um, focal range. It just There's so many things you can do with it. I, I shoot sports with it. I shoot conference videos. I shoot um, corporate videos. And this thing can handle everything, everything you throw at it. A lot of kids, the young guys, they roll their eyes at old camcorder cameras because you, it is a fixed lens camera. So unlike, say, the GH5, where you can change uh, all kinds of lenses, get all kinds of different looks. And I do advise that for beginners because you really appreciate what the len lens is doing to the sensor and how it renders colors and images and stuff like that. So each lens you put on gives you a different look. Whereas this, uh, getting a camcorder, a fixed lens camera, you're stuck to that. But you've got to remember the whole entire camera is designed for this lens or reverse look. This Zeiss lens it, um, is designed for this camera. So everything works together. It's a par focal lens, so you won't have issues with um, the focus breathing. So if you zoom in, focus on something, zoom back out, it'll maintain that focus range the whole entire time, which is absolutely handy. The peaking, <laughs> I turned peaking really high. I think I've got, if I can show you, maybe maybe I've turned off peaking. Yeah, I've turned off peaking, sorry. But I, I got peaking set to really high, so everything is red. Um, I can't remember why I turned it off. I think I gave this to somebody and they didn't like all the red that's showing up. But I have peaking on like crazy. <laughs> it has two memory card slots as well. So I just record as a redundancy. So they're both, it records the same thing to both um, to, to both uh, memory cards, which is really, really handy. Uh, the, um, it's got a few custom buttons and I always set the one closest to the lens as my white balance. Um, so yeah, I zoom in and then I, you know, you always got to remember to do your white balance with these cameras. Another thing I don't like with the menu system, once you do set your white balance here, it's got it as a memory A, um, for white balance. See there, see that, that A and, and that, that, that's the memory of the white balance. I wish it had a number. I'm so used to dialing in my white balance from the black magic camera. I wish it just said right there, if it can focus. Oh my gosh, my depth of field's all over the place. I wish it would say 5600 or 3400 or whatever, like right next to that A. All it's saying is memory A, white balance. It's not giving me a number. And again, because I've used so many different cameras, I'm just favoring so many different functions. I just wish, oh, I wish that function of black magic was in this. I wish the custom functions of the GH5 was in this, you know, just stuff like that. Um, and... Yeah, so uh, what else do I like about oh the um the stabilization isn't the best. So it does have a stabilization mode, and you'll see it's like a hand that that'll come up. Um, uh, where is it? Um, have I got it on that steady? Nope. That's the spot focus. Got to sit somewhere. So maybe that's it there. Yeah, so I think, yeah, you'll see the hands, see how the hands height slightly shifts. So that's when the stabilization is on. It only works if you're zoomed all the way out. So once you're zoomed all the way out, you just got to do very, very careful handheld movements. Put a stabilization on that on Final Cut X, and you should be pretty damn good or warp stabilization on After Effects. It should get you out of a lot of trouble. But after using the GH5, you know, not many cameras can compare the stabilization of the GH5, you know, so that's understandable. When they say, when people ask, oh, how's the stabilization on the camera? I could say it's good, but if you go, oh, compared to the GH5, oh man, it's garbage. <laughs> but this is an incredible camera. The focal range is great. The autofocus, which I spoke a lot about with, about talking about all the cameras, 
The autofocus on this is amazing. I set up the camera for interviews. I just leave it on autofocus um, and I zoom out a bit because I'm shooting in 4K. And the reason for that is so I can have, so I can recompose it in my editing program for social media, whether it's, you know, um, uh, 1080 by 1080 or 1080 by 1920, you know, that really vertical sort of format. So quite often my interviews, I I just, I shoot it in 4K, zoomed a lot out, and then I recompose for whatever format that they need it for, whether it's standard or whatever. It just gives you a bit of breathing room and all my deliveries are in 1920, 1080. But um, yeah, absolutely incredible professional camera. I love how lightweight this camera is. I love how small this camera is as well. It kind of still has that professionalism when you take it out. People take you a little bit seriously. Um, I know with the EX1, it's an older camera, but when I take that camera out, people act differently because they think you're so professional because it's a bigger camera. And that is a factor. I personally, this is my personal camera, the GH5, and I shoot a lot of stuff with this. But look how small this lens is in this camera. People don't take you as serious because the camera is so small, and which is so ridiculous because the A7S III beats the hell out of almost every single cam- camcorder out there unless you go up to the FX3s, FX, oh, FX6s, FX9s, you know, these smaller um, DSLR cameras, mirrorless cameras are absolutely fantastic, but I've seen it firsthand at shoots. If you come there with a bigger camera, the more professional people take you, which is really ridiculous. Um, Yeah, so the image quality in this I think is absolutely fantastic. I hate grading S-Log. I never shoot S-Log. I bought Doug Jensen's... um, uh, tutorial on this i had to rent it you can't buy and download it which is so silly but yeah doug jensen has a um a, a color palette set to cinema four i think it is and you just got to tweak it there that's all i did and i, and I use a little bit of film convert set to oh, i can't remember what i set it to a6300 sec i don't know film convert and that really helps the image quality a bit but really uh, not much grading. I I I I don't do too much grading. I I've I graded for a long time with S log two and S log three stuff when I was at um when I was doing commercials, and I I really don't like grading an S log. V log is fine. C log is fine. Black magic is great, but S log two I I really really don't like it uh, at all. Um, but uh, Sony cameras, I think their standard stuff is really good. And I'd love, I wish they would do an upgrade with this to have S Cinetone. I heard that's phenomenal. I wish if they brought, bought, made an upgrade of this, which had S Cinetone and 4K60, perfect camera <laughs> um, for me. Oh my gosh, I would be over the moon if they released that. Um, because I really love this camera and I'm so sad to to hand this back over to work because my job, my contract is finished and I have to hand over all the gear and I just have a sad feeling that this camera is just going to sit in a cabinet somewhere and never be used. Um, yeah, and I, I've shot a few small corporate videos with this. I shot a documentary with this. I shot, you know, all kinds of stuff. I practice and practice with this camera and I absolutely love it. I'm so sad to not be using it anymore because it's just such a great all-rounder camera. My main camera is the um, GH5, which is my personal camera. And this was a lot cheaper, $1,400 just for the body. And I've just been slowly building up my lens collection when I can afford it. This camera here is very expensive for what it is, not offering 4k 50 or 4k 60 it was about all up five and a half thousand maybe even just under six grand or was it just under five grand i think it would have been yeah it would have been five thousand five hundred all up because of the battery uh, because of the microphone and because of the battery the extra battery and the charger uh, not including the memory cards and stuff like that. So it's a pretty pricey camera, but you get broadcast quality um, image. It's not 10-bit as well, the 4K video. It's only 10-bit when you go down to 1080p, which might be another deal breaker for you. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I love fixed les- lens cameras. I still think there's a place for them. Again, the whole camera is designed for this lens. It's a par focal lens. What you can get out of this is very, very professional stuff, very, very high-quality image. And I absolutely wholeheartedly um, recommend this camera. It's it's fantastic, uh, the Z90. And again, there's that room to upgrade with the SDI um, 
uh, SDI uh, um, connection here so you can get a really good external monitor if you want to. Um, yeah, um, and I never played with it, but it has, uh, what do you call it, um, streaming capabilities. I've, I've, never, <laughs> I've never messed around with the streaming, streaming capabilities of, of this camera. But um, yeah, wholeheartedly um, recommend the Sony Z90.